We are going to assemble the lining. Um, now this should be a lot quicker than the coat because we know what we're doing now. It's just getting the right pieces into the right places. So I've got my front lining and I've got my front facing. You'll have a pair of each of them. The way they go together is with this long edge. So it's kind of like the princess seam um, running down the front over the bust, but on the inside. This is the neck hole and this is the arm hole. And we're going to pin them together. <coughs> we're going to do it in exactly the same way we did before. Start at the bottom, pinning up and then at the top pinning down and then ease in this curve around the bust if you're doing a lady size. If you're doing a kid size, you'll be able to just pin all the way down. Um, and here is one I have already prepared. And as you can see, it's a bit confusing when you grab your pattern pieces. I've only clipped this, I've not, I've not actually stitched it yet. Um, that your facing will be made out of your final fabric. And that's because this is the bit of the inside of the coat that flaps open in the breeze. If you don't have it done up and you'll be able to see it. So we do that out of the, the main fabric, not out of lining. So if you clip or pin that together all the way down and then stitch it using a half inch seam allowance. Um, I like to go to my sewing machine with several pieces so that I can um, continue on with the next bit without pausing. So I'm going to show you the next bit as well. So we're also going to stitch together the back lining at the same time. These are the same size and shape pattern pieces because they're a mirror image. We're going to place them right sides together and stitch down that centre back. They won't sit flat because remember if you've done the ladies um, you will have already done this dart so this will all sit strangely as you're holding it. Um, and I'll show you that here. So I've clipped this ready to go um, and um, I have placed them right sides together. Um, it is actually lined up nicely. I did check that. Um, and I've clipped down the centre back here and I'm going to stitch down the centre back seam. And exactly the same as the front, well sorry not the front, the outside of the coat, you'll find that there is this um, uh, a vent at the bottom so that as you walk the coat can move. If you're doing a shorter coat you might decide to just skip that and just cut straight down um, as, as we talked about earlier but if you're doing the longer coat I would definitely recommend doing the vent um, and if you're going to be doing any kind of brisk walking or <laughs> um, energetic activities in the shorter coat um, then we're only, when we stitch down the centre back seam do exactly the same as on the front measure down three eighths of an inch from the top of this vent not from the bottom from the top and stop stitching there and then we're going to leave this part here unstitched but then when you press the seam open uh, we're going to press to only about an inch above this um, an inch above this pin so I will stitch that and then show you. Here we go I've stitched my back pieces and then I've opened it out and I've um, uh, pressed the seam open so that's the armhole, neck hole, armhole and then you can see I'm doing the ladies so I've got the, um, the darts in the back that we did earlier and I've come down and I've stitched to three eighths of an inch below where that vent starts um, but I have only pressed it open to about here. I have not pressed this bit. So this bit here is all still completely not pressed and that's exactly how we want it. If you want to do a hanging loop, um, uh, this is the pattern piece for it. Um, it's just a little rectangle and because, do you remember I said my fabric, I ordered it and I thought it was woven and it arrived and it's a stretch. Um, so I've had, to, I've had to just use it. Um, what I've done is I've interfaced the back of this. You do not need to interface it if you've just got woven fabrics. Now, I have finger pressed this so you can kind of see where the lines are because this is a tricky little thing to show you um, on such a small piece. And what I've done is I've pressed it in half lengthways and then I've opened it out and then I've pressed one edge in and then the other edge in like that and pressed that like that and then I folded it in half again and pressed it again. So this is the exact same construction as we had with the um, uh, with the belt loops. Um, and then I'm gonna just put a pin or some clips in it. And what I wanna do is stitch down either side. So I'm gonna stitch um, close to the edge. Oh, I can't pick my pins up, I've lost them. Oh, they're all falling everywhere behind the camera. Here we go. Um, got one. So I'm going to stitch down along close to one edge and close to the other edge so that there's two rows of stitching and that just holds that nice and um, nice and firm together. 
So I've got my hanging loops that I've now stitched um, in place. And what I wanna do is measure about half an inch out from one side of the center back, and I'm going to clip it into place. And I'm making sure the raw edges are matched so that you get the full kind of length of the hanging loop once it's been stitched on. And I'm gonna not, I'm, I'm not gonna twist it, I'm gonna keep it flat and just curve it around to about half an inch um, out from the other side. And uh, once I'm not on camera trying to do this with a camera between myself and the garment, I will actually measure that and check that's accurate because I want that to sit really nicely and also um, get these raw edges really nicely aligned. And then once I've, um, I'm happy with the placement, I'm gonna stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance to hold that in place. And I'm gonna stitch back and forwards a couple of times because this really does pull on here. Once it's attached to the collar, it will sit much nicer. And I could have used my lining fabric, um, but I just think it looks really nice with the exterior against the lining. So I've used my um, exterior for that. So I'm gonna stitch that on and then I'm gonna treat this as one piece from now on. And when I stitch the collar later, I will just ignore that there, but I will make sure that I don't accidentally ever tuck that up and get that caught in. You want to keep that um, poking into the garment. So next up, we're going to sew, sew our sleeve lining. So you need the under sleeve and the over sleeve lining pieces. And we're going to line it up just like we did with the sleeve from the top all the way down to the bottom on that long edge and there is a little notch there that you can see which is where we stop stitching uh, for the sleeve event. So you place the right sides together, pin from the bottom upwards so that you get that nice little V at the top and then stitch using a half inch seam allowance from the top down to this little notch here. Um, and stop there for the sleeve vent. If you're doing my hack with um, no sleeve vent, then you would keep it lined up and stitch all the way to the bottom. So this is my sleeve I've now stitched together and I've opened that out and you can see the little point at the top. <clears throat> and then coming down to the bottom, I've pressed the seam open the whole way down. Uh, this is my modified one where I've stitched the whole way down, but if you're doing the sleeve vent as per the pattern, um, your stitching would stop here, but you would still press the seam open all the way down as if there is no stopping. So when you get to the point where you should stop, um, press the seam open and then continue to press it with a half inch seam allowance to the bottom. Once you've done that, the next step, and here's one I prepared earlier on the other sleeve, is to press up your memory hem. Now, um, the memory hem um, does vary for different sizes. For ladies, it's half an inch. Uh, for the Charles and Dolls, if you're doing either of those, just pop into the tutorial and make sure you get the exact right amount for your size. And then once you've pressed that, that this is just to hold it. That's not quite a straight. I will go back and straighten that out. Ah, there we go, like that. Let's just pretend it looks like that. Um, uh, once you've pressed that in, that is just to hold it. We're not actually doing anything with it just yet. Uh, but then what you will need to do is grab your clips or pins and we're gonna open this memory seam um, back out. Um, and then we're going to um, fold this over and uh, pin in or clip um, the uh, the seam on the other side. Now you are going to, so let's pin, let's pretend we've pinned all the way up this arm um, and we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did with the sleeve. We start from the bottom, stitch all the way down to the bottom, that's not quite aligned, and then stitch all the way through the memory hem. So you're going to go all the way through to the bottom with your stitching using a half inch seam allowance and then press that open as best you can and you wanna fold this memory hem back up. Now what I like to do when I'm then stitching the rest of it is I'll often just put clips in this. I think I showed that earlier. Um, if I didn't, I did it when I got off camera um, with the, the actual um, fabric as well as with the lining. If I fold the memory hem in, I'll then just clip it in place as I'm doing everything else. So stitch this seam using half inch seam allowance. Um, well, press up your memory hem first stitch the seam using half inch seam allowance and then press your hem back up again and just hold it in place. So here is my lining and I've placed my um, two front pieces on top of my back piece and um, you can see here I've got my hanging loop um, that I have attached on. Now I need to do the shoulders so I've attached them starting from the um, uh, from the neckline going outwards so that I get uh, there's a little bit of a point that sticks out on the um, on the 
uh, the armhole. So I'm going to start from there, working outwards, and when I stitch it, I'm going to stitch from the neckline outwards. Um, and that way, if anything stretches, your neckline still fits really nicely. And then I'm going to press that seam open. Um, and later on, as we then attach the sleeves, I'm going to make sure that I keep those seam allowances open to keep the bulk down. So I've done my um, shoulder seams here, um, and now uh, we're going to do the side seams. So you've got your um, uh, uh, front right side down onto your back, and then um, line it up from the underarm seam going downwards. Now they should match exactly, you shouldn't have to ease or pull or anything like that. So if these side seams don't match, um, check them against your pattern piece and make sure that uh, they are cut to the right length and they've not stretched anywhere. Um, so clip these together, um, fronts to backs, um, down the side seam and stitch each one using a half inch seam allowance. Next we're going to attach the sleeve, in, the sleeve lining into the lining and we're going to do this exactly the same way as we did the exterior of the coat. Um, so first off if you haven't got your notches for the underarm, which is this, where the side seam will be, and um, on the, um, uh, the uh, what's it called? <laughs> shoulder seam, the shoulder seam notch, uh, then transfer those onto your pattern pieces. Just make sure that when you do that you make sure to unfold the seam allowance so that you are getting that in exactly the right place because if you don't um, uh, if you don't un, um, uh, open the seam allowance again out like that um, your, your notch will be in the wrong place by the amount of the seam allowance. So make sure to unfold your sleeve and then then get your pin in the right place. So once you've got those in, which I have, um, fold your sleeve the right way out. So you can see I've got my um, shoulder seam and my underarm seam and if I place this flat you'll see they are not directly opposite each other and the sleeve is not symmetrical and that is correct so make sure you've got them in there. <coughs> and then you're looking for the side that is the front of the sleeve not the back of the sleeve. So exactly the same as the coat, the back of the sleeve will have this um, seam running, not quite halfway, but kind of right in the middle of the um, of the sleeve somewhere. And when you fold it, um, turn it back over the other way, the front of the sleeve will be mostly free of seam, just with the seam um, quite close to the quite close to the underarm. And then this is my um, my garment here. You're looking to your need, what I would do is place your, turn your sleeves right side out and your coat or your lining, turn everything right side out and then try and work out which sleeve goes with which armhole. So I can see, this is my neckline, um, my, mm, here we go, this is my neckline here, uh, my back, my front and this is my armhole here and my side seam. And if I place this sleeve up against it uh, with the, um, the right side up, um, that that will match nicely. It, um, if I tried to put it on the other side of the garment, so over on that way, on the other side of the garment, I would see this seam right in the middle, which I know is the back, not the front. So if I put it up against this armhole, this is um, the front, so that's correct. So I'm going to pin that one into the armhole in the same way we did before, to keep the coat, keep the sleeve right side out, and turn the coat wrong side out, and then pull this through and I'm going to pin on the underarm here, match that pin to the underarm side seam, and I'm going to find the pin from the top, and I'm going to match that to the, um, the shoulder seam. Then go round, pin from the bottom first along the flat bit, and then ease in the top in exactly the same way as we did with the, the main garment, where you, you, you line up the raw edges so that they're together, and then you press it in along the seam line here. And while these stay level, um, the sleeve on the inside will be all wobbly along the edge, but completely flat along the seam line. And as it happens, here's one I prepared earlier. God, I love saying that. Oh, so fun. Um, so I've done this one already, and you can see I've used loads of clips. And um, this fabric does, it's, it's a woven, it won't stretch, really at all along 
um, kind of that way or that way. But if I get it on the bias, it does have ever so slight. I mean, it's tiny, but it's got an ever so slight stretch. So um, this is doing it with really a fabric that does not stretch very well at all. And so long as I've kept my seam allowances aligned and I've got my top um, and my bottom pins attached in the right places, um, and I, whoops, that's popped out. Um, and I, I fold it in like that. I've managed to get that pinned in without really too much trouble. I mean, it took me a little while. I had to move some of the pins back and forth, but there's no bubbles. It's all flat on the seam allowance. But when I stitch it and I release some of these pins out, um, you will see that, well, that one's not very much, is it? Anyway, you will see that there is a slight wobble there, but it is flat along there. So, what I'm going to do now is stitch this all the way around using a half inch seam allowance and then just like we did with the main coat I'm going to stitch again a second time inside the seam allowance all the way around just to keep this really sturdy so that if I do any stretching or pulling um, wearing my coat that the seam is not going to pop. So here's my sleeve sewn into my armhole um, and as you can see I've stitched around two times already and um, as you can see by the way it's sitting, that um, it's straight on the outside and wavy on the inside. Doing the second row of stitching does actually stop the waviness. It was way more um, before I did that second row, but it doesn't matter. It's on the inside of the garment, so so long as you get it smooth and there's no kind of tucks or little nicks in the seam here, um, that's what we're looking for. So. Um, we are now going to turn it out, so open it up like so, and then um, do exactly the same as with the um, uh, with the outside of the garment. Get a tailor's ham or a rolled up um, bit of um, uh, what's it called? The thing that you wipe in the kitchen with um, a rolled up oh I've forgotten towel <laughs> um yeah you could even just use a clean rolled up um, towel and pop it under here and then you're gonna um um uh, press the <clears throat> the seam if you haven't done the second row of stitching you could press it open um otherwise I press it towards the seam and I want to open that that um seam up I press it towards the shoulder open that seam up um and get that pressed all out nice and nice and flat Right, before we attach the coat to the lining, we need to fold up our memory hem. Now with the, when we attach the coat to the lining, we actually leave our memory hem pressed upwards. So this is really, really important to do this. Um, if you are doing the simpler version that I'm gonna do on this coat versus um, the one out of the tutorial with the, um, uh, in the black coat, um, you don't actually technically need this pressed up all the way, but because the hem amounts are different, I still really recommend you do so that you um, get it in the right place and don't make any errors. So for both versions, the simpler one that I'm going to show you now, which we do in the Amsterdam coat, and the more complicated one that we do here in the Taylor coat, both of them press your memory hem up, which is the um, the amount that we want to hem on the bottom of the coat, press it up so that the hem is wrong sides to wrong side, and you can see um, the hem um, pressed um, over. For the ladies on the lining, this is a half inch hem you're going to do. And then on the actual, I've got my coat here as well. Um, uh, on the actual coat, um, it is one and a half inches and press it all the way along the bottom of the coat. Um, then leave it up. Don't unfold it like we did the sleeves. You know, we unfolded the sleeves and then we joined them together and we stitched all the way down. With the coat, we're not going to do that. We're going to leave it folded up. And then when we join the coat to the lining, we're going to leave it folded up and we're going to stitch all the way to the bottom and we'll just be aligning the, the folded edge of the, the lining with the folded edge of the coat and stitch it up like that. Um, the uh, Childs and the Dolls does have different amounts. It's not half an inch and then an inch and a half. Um, it is different. Do make sure to check for your exact size to make sure you get the right one for you. Um, look that up in the tutorial. So press these both up. Um, and then we're going to attach the coat to the lining. So this is um, actually my computer screen. What I want to show you is the picture of what we're going to do next, which is where we attach the coat to the lining. Now, what we're going to do is place the coat right side up and the lining right side down onto it. Um, and I'll show you how we do it in a minute. But um, basically, this is the neckline here. The collar is folded in. 
um, this is one front seam and this is one front seam and the side seams are here that's the armhole here that's the armhole there that's the side seam there and then that's the center back and all of this sticking out is just the coat underneath so um, what we're going to do is place them together and we're going to stitch from one side all the way along along the top and down the bottom and I'll show you what we align first to do that um, but there's a method where you can um, uh, do this differently and leave the sleeves out and after you've stitched then stitch the sleeves together and stitch further along here and just leave a small turning gap uh, we do that in the Amsterdam coat if you want to look that up and try that method you can um, and I will do part of that method with the leopard um, the, the faux animal print one that I'm doing with my black one I'm going to show you this method here so I can't get the whole coat onto the video, so I just wanted to show you that on the screen. Um, and you've obviously got the pattern if you're doing the sew along, so you'll be able to open it up and have a little look. That's, um, we're in step 15 now. We are ready to attach the coat to the lining. So I've got my coat here facing wrong side up and the whole thing is inside out. You can see my collar, but my sleeves here are inside out. Um, and you can see those are my um, my shoulder seams, my centre back seam. So I'm going to flip it over now. Once I've got the whole thing inside out, I'm going to flip it over and um, place it right side up. Now, if you were to imagine we were doing the coat up around a person, it is still inside out. There's my collar, um, there's the front pieces, there's the back there, and then my sleeves here are coming out and they are still inside out. So I'm going to tuck my sleeves underneath so they're out of the way and I'm going to stretch it out across um, the shoulders and out to the front as best I can. Um, then I'm going to take the collar and fold it down into the garment. Do not want your collar sticking up because if we attach the lining here and then we turn it through, your collar will be on the inside. So make sure your collar is flipped down so that when we stitch this and turn it through, the collar ends up on the outside of the garment. And if you can't picture that, don't worry, just follow the steps. Put the collar um, so that it's facing down into the jacket. And then you're looking for this seam line here, which is where we've attached the collar to the garment. And you can see those are my shoulder seams, that's my center back seam. And then that's where my collar ends here. And then it comes out to this bit here, which crosses over the body. So I want that, um, that's the seam along that top edge there that I'm looking for. Now I want to keep that where it is and grab my lining. And I have also turned my lining inside out. Hey, where's the top of it? I had it all lined up to show you. Here we go. So I've also turned my lining inside out. That's my sleeve there, that's across the back and you've got the, the fronts there and then my other sleeve on the other side. So I'm gonna place my lining so that it is right side together with my coat. So um, there's the inside of my lining, the outside of my coat. They're both inside out, but I'm gonna place them one on top of the other. I'm gonna keep my sleeves out of the way and open out my facing. So I'm looking for that same long edge between the top of the front, along the back of the neck and the top of the front again. And um, the first thing I'm gonna do here to attach them is I'm going to match the two centre back seams. So if you've done the hanging loop, it's going to be sticky up and out of the way. Push that in and um, uh, pin the two together. If you've got the, um, uh, the back yoke, this is going to be a really thick part of the garment because you'll also have the back yoke sandwiched in there. Um, then I'm going to just treat it all as one. You don't need to do anything special with the back yoke. It, it's all folded in under the collar. Um, then I'm looking for the shoulder seams and I'm going to um, pin or clip them together making sure my raw edges are um, uh, level and then um, you can either, in fact let's pin all of the edges first and then come back and fill it in. Uh, then I'm looking for the corner. So this is the corner of the front and I'm placing the corner of the facing on top of it and I'm going to clip that together. The last bit I'm looking for is where this exact edge where the collar ends. If I was to just clip it here, then what happens as you're stitching, because this is so heavy, I forget which way it pulls, I think it pulls like that. 
but I've stitched this a number of times and this little corner, if you just clip it on either side of that, this little corner ends up all skew with and you end up with this funny little bobble as you go past it. So I highly recommend, this does not need stretching by the way, these, this here is the same length all the way along. So walk your fingers along to find, to get so the fabrics are perfectly aligned and then put a clip right over the top or a pin right over the top of where that collar ends so that that doesn't slip in or out and you keep that aligned um, and then we're going to do the same with the other side but um i'll do that when we're off camera because this takes a while otherwise um uh, then i'm going to place a whole heap of pins along here to make sure that this is all aligned there's nothing stretched nothing bobbling um, and um, especially along where the front yokes and back yokes are that they are um, uh, that they are um, all lined up and uh, nothing's slipping out of place and then if you've got the hanging loop put a clip over the top of the hanging loop as well so all the way along like that and then do it along the other side as well so then um, I'm going to take this other side and I'm going to line up first the shoulder seam if I can find it there it is line up the shoulder seam and then line up um, keeping the collar tucked in and everything else out of the way line up this corner and then um, the edge of the collar there we go and then clip all the way along there as well so then you've got your this top edge remember I showed you on the screen how it came um, the stitching comes up one side along the top and down the bottom what we've just clipped is the along the top bit so this ends up being um, roughly a straight line to stitch in we're going to use a half an inch seam allowance when we stitch it but um, not yet um, so keep your sleeve out of the way and then you're going to clip down the front edge so i won't bore you with me uh, lining all of that up but i'm gonna um, come all the way down if you've done the pockets make sure to keep them out of the way when you're pinning but come all the way down to the bottom and when you get to the bottom your um, uh, your coat will have one will have the long seam allowance tucked under and your lining will have the short seam allowance tucked under and what you want to do is align those two folded edges so if I grab a just run out of clips oopsie daisy um, I'm going to clip that there like that so this is going to be clipped all the way along here and then you can see I've got long seam allowance and short seam allowance. Now that might look really, really weird, but there are good technical reasons why we've got one longer than the other. One is so that if you want to slip stitch them together <coughs> um, in a more tailored way, you've got the correct seam allowances for you to do that. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this particular tutorial. Uh, but that is one reason. Another reason is because the weight of the outer of the fabric is generally heavier than the inside of the lining and we want the hem to sit down, to sit flat and to sit kind of heavily, so to speak, at the bottom of the coat. So having a, um, a good um, uh, hem allowance there um, allows us to do that. We don't need a big bulk though, which is why we then just use a normal half inch seam allowance on the lining. If you were to use it half, an inch and a half on the lining as well, um, you'll then end up with a big kind of bulge underneath. Um, whereas just giving this, doing it on one side gives the weight without it being bulgy by also doing the lining as well. So I hope, I hope it's made sense, but it should when you line it up, um, when you start from the bottom, from the top, not stretching, just lining the whole thing up all the way down the seam here, they should meet at the bottom so that your two folded edges are um, aligned exactly like that. Um, and you've got your longer seam allowance on your coat side and your shorter seam allowance on your, on your um, lining side. So if you were doing the black version, what you need to do now is um, clip all the way along, all the way up one side, along the top and down the other side, and then stitch that using a half inch seam allowance. If you are doing the um, uh, this, um, in fact, uh, hmm, how should we do this? Uh, yes, if you were doing the black one, stitch that now. Um, so that's the traditional one in the actual pattern um, of the coat. Um, 
if you're doing this one where you're doing the kind of cheats version, then I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. And um, this is um, kind of like how we do the Amsterdam one. So keep your pin, keep your clips running all the way down. Um, go close to, but not all the way up to your fold line. Then what we're going to do here is grab my pins and we're going to unfold this hem here and we're going to stitch along the fold line. So this is stitching the hem line um, along um, here. Uh, so we're going to essentially stitch from nearly at the back all the way along up, along the top, down and back. And we're going to leave a gap um, of about um, two inches either side of the vent. Um, we're not going to do it all the way along. Um, it's going to be two inches either side of the vent. Now, your, um, when you do this, your side seams sh um, will match up. So you'll pin along this fold line here, along this front facing does not match up with that one. They are in two different places. Don't worry that they don't line up. Um, and you're going to keep your fold lines aligned. So see how this fold line here, I'm going to align it with that. And I'm going to pin all the way along, along here, along here along here, along here, and when I get to the side seams, um, they should match there, see like that, and then I'm going to pin it along, 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 and then I'm going to stop uh, when I get close um, to the back, in fact actually, let's leave a good kind of three or four inches. <laughs>